we are going to discuss a very important concept and this concept is nothing but called as conditional statements. Now from the name itself we understand statements which are having a condition attached to it is nothing but called as conditional statements. Now if you want to write conditional statements in English we always use the two keywords that is if and then. That means what I'm trying to say is very simple statements which can be written in the if then form are called as conditional statements. I repeat, so what are conditional statements? Any statement which we write in the if then form are called as conditional statements, right? We make a lot of conditional statements like this to our parents say that if I score 90% then you're gifting me an iPhone, isn't it? So we say this way, beautiful. Those are nothing but conditional statements. Okay, I know now you are remembering a lot of conditional statements, but we are not getting into those statements. We are going to get into conditional statements related with mathematics. Let's understand now. I give you a statement now. Observe, it says that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular by sectors of each other. Now that's a statement. That's not conditional right now, right? Because is it in the if then form? No. I want you to write it in the conditional form. So let's understand what is it talking about? It's talking about a rhombus. That means we are saying that if there is a rhombus, that means if the given quadrilateral is a rhombus, then we know what does the statement say? Then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So the same statement which was given, we wrote it in the conditional form, isn't it? It's so simple. Read the statement, it says, if the given quadrilateral is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other, isn't it? Now this is a conditional statement. So in examinations, we can be given questions like this. They'll give you a statement and ask you to write it in the conditional form. Conditional form means in the if then format. It's so simple, right? Now, you know, when we write it in the conditional form, the statement which is between if and then, that is a statement, right? The given quadrilateral is a rhombus. It, that is called as antecedent. What is that called as? It is called as antecedent. And the statement which follows then, which comes after then, is called as the consequent. In simple words, in simple words, this statement which is between if and then is nothing but the given. And the statement which follows then is nothing but the to prove or we say the result. So I repeat, it was very simple here when you look at this statement which is in the if then form that means it's a conditional statement. In a conditional statement, the statement which comes between if and then is called as an antecedent or we say it is a given. And the statement which follows then is called as consequent or we call it as the to prove. Isn't that easy? Very simple, right? So that means we can be given a statement and are asked to write in the conditional form. We know conditional form means if then form. And from that they'll say write down the antecedent and the consequent. It's so simple, we know that, right? Okay, very simple. I'll give you one more thing. I've given you a statement. So we have the conditional statement right now. I'm saying we want to write the converse. No, converse means very simple. For the statement, we need to write the converse. Now, what do you mean by converse? Converse is simple. Converse means just swap the places of the antecedent and the consequent. We need to swap their places. Now, let's see what happens here if we swap. If we swap their places, what happens? Now, observe what happens. If the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other, then the given quadrilateral is a rhombus. It's easy. That's true. What we learned earlier is, if the quadrilateral is a rhombus, then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. We did the converse, means we change, we swap the places of the antecedent and the consequent. So previous statement, in that statement, whatever was the consequent has become the antecedent and antecedent became the consequent. And now the statement of that, the converse statement of the previous statement is, if the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other, then the given quadrilateral is a rhombus. It's true. In any quadrilateral, if the diagonals are perpendicular bisector, then it is a rhombus. That means the converse of that conditional statement. Isn't that true? It's true. So for a conditional statement, we can always write the converse. What are we doing for the converse? It's very simple. We just need to swap the places of the antecedent and the consequent. Isn't that easy? Very easy, right? 
let's take another example now we have another example which says that an obtuse angle triangle is a triangle in which one of the interior angle measures more than 90 degree okay let's write this in the conditional form is this in the conditional form right now no because it is not in the if then form so let's write it so what does it say it's talking about an obtuse angle triangle that means we are saying that if the triangle is obtuse angle triangle so we write the statement if the triangle is an obtuse angle triangle then what happens then we know that one of the interior angle measures more than 90 degree isn't that now we know we have written that statement in the if then form that means this is a conditional statement and here the statement between if and then is nothing but it is the antecedent and this what follows then is the consequent in other words this is the given and this statement is the two proof easy very easy now i am saying that i want you to write the converse of this conditional statement can you write you'll say yes it's so simple we just need to swap the places of the antecedent and the consequent let's do that now let's do beautiful it is going to be there yes now you have it so you have the converse now read the statement if one of the interior angle measures more than 90 degree then the triangle is an obtuse angle triangle it's true so we wrote the converse of a conditional statement and it is true it is correct because if any angle of a triangle one angle of a triangle measures more than 90 degree then we know that it is an obtuse angle triangle so true right so we have so beautiful statement so we understood what is a conditional statement how to write the converse of a conditional statement what is antecedent what is consequent simple right now let's look at another example see this now this statement this is a conditional statement which i'm giving you it says that if a number is prime then it is odd or even is it true yes because we know what are prime numbers right so i'm just writing that statement what it says if the number is prime then it is odd or even yes it is this is true because when we talk about a prime number, what are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers which are only divisible by itself and one, right? So you talk about all prime numbers, right? They are odd except for one that is two, right? That is why it says if a number is prime, then it is odd or even, true. Because there's only one even number that is two and all other prime numbers are odd. So I'm saying I want a converse statement of this. So can you write the converse? Yes, you know, because this is nothing but it is the antecedent and this is a consequence so you're going to swap their places beautiful let's write this now we're going to swap their places yes so now the statement would go like this if the number is odd or even then it is prime now i have a question is it true we are saying that if a number is odd or even then it is a prime number if you look in an odd number right you take any odd number let's say we take a number that is nine that's an odd number but if you took at 9, 9 is divisible by itself and 1, but 9 is also divisible by 3. That means it is odd, but it is not a prime number. If you look at another number, 15, it is an odd number, but it is not prime because it is divisible by 3, it is divisible by 5 also. That means this statement, this converse statement, which we made right now, if a number is odd or even it is prime, it is not right, it is false. This is a false statement, remember, that means we are given a conditional statement that doesn't mean that its converse always has to be correct remember that so what we are saying is if a conditional statement is true then its converse is not necessarily true as we saw this conditional statement is true but its converse is not true remember that that's the logic very very beautiful thing which we learned and yes, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon.